Hello everyone, in this tutorial we'll see how to create this 80s style stay at home text effect as you can see in here using Adobe Photoshop. Alright with that being said, I hope that you all doing great and staying at home safe and well. Alright so let's get to it. Okay, so open your Photoshop and then let's go to File, New, and we're gonna create a new document using 1920 for the width, 1080 pixel for the height, 72 in the resolution, and RGB in the color mode. And of course, if you want to print this, you can change the resolution to 300 or more, and then switch the color mode to CMYK. But we're not going to do this. For this tutorial so i'm gonna press ok all right now we're gonna add a new background so we we'll go to the adjustments layer in here and i will choose solid color and the color that we'll be using in here it's a dark purple so i'm gonna choose purple from this slider in here and then i will go down to make it darker yes a little bit close to the dark area in here and that would be okay all right let's delete this uh, layer in here and let's name this bg for background all right now it's time to add our text so let's go and select the text tool in here and uh, for this we are going to use a, a free font that's called uh, high october you will find it down in the link from the description below so just download it and make sure to install it before you launch your photoshop so this way you can find it in here already ready to be used so let's first change the size of this to 300 points and then i'm gonna change the color to this pink color I'm just using this pink I don't know how it's gonna look but we can go back and change it later all right so I'm gonna press ok and then I'm gonna select the font in here and I will type hi October as you can see I already installed it so I found it in here all right now I'm just gonna one click and I will type stay like this all right the font is perfect and as you can see i type the s in capital and everything else is normal all right let's switch to my move tool and i will put this in the middle and i will drag it down just right here okay now we're gonna add a, a layer style to this so i'm gonna double click on it in here to open the layer style dialog or you can go to this fx icon and one click on it and choose leading option and either way this will open the layer style dialog in here all right so we're gonna add an outer blur for this so i'm gonna select it and i will change the blend mode for this to normal and opacity i will put 40 percent and for the noise I will keep it 0% but for the color I'm gonna change it to a red reddish pinkish color something that will go really good for this color in here so I think something like this will be good all right and I will press ok and now for the spread I will keep it 0% and for the size I will choose between 40 to 50 pixels pixels in here so i'm gonna keep it 46 and as you can see this will add a very nice glow to this and that's all what we're gonna do for this first text in here and i'm gonna press ok all right now it's time to add our next text so i'm gonna select the background layer in here because i want the text to be below this stay layer in here so i will go again and select my text tool in here and uh, the font that we'll be using for this is called Bebas. It's very known font, but you will find the link down in the description where you can download it too. All right, so let's search for Bebas. 
I will be using the BBS regular and I'm gonna change the size to 500 point and the color I'm gonna change it to white and I will press OK alright now I'm gonna one click and I will type home alright as you can see it's a little bit big but we're gonna fix that so I'm gonna double click on this home text in here and this way it will get highlighted and I will open the character uh, tab in here if you can't find this you can just go to window and make sure that character is checked and it will open all right now I'm gonna change some few settings for this uh, vertically settings in here I'm gonna put it down to 70% all right and i will gonna change this horizontally to to 90 percent all right i think this will look a little bit better but make sure to go back and set this to the default you know just check reset character in case that you are using uh, the text for anything else this will affect your you know your format of the text so just make sure to go back if you are using a new document and reset this character later all right i think now i'm gonna go to the move tool and i will select my text and i will put it somewhere in here i think this looks nice but i'm thinking to make it a little bit more bigger somewhere in here all right and I will press enter all right now I'm gonna convert this text to a smart object so I'm gonna right click on it in here and I will choose convert to smart object and then I'm gonna create another copy of this so I'm gonna drag it to this new layer and this will create another copy and I will name this to outline and this one I'm gonna name it to base all right now I'm gonna hide this outline by one click on this eye icon in here and this will make it invisible now we can focus on this one so I'm gonna add a layer size to this so I will go to this FX icon and I will choose blending option all right so the first style that we are going to add is an outer glow and as you can see we still have the other one that we used so I'm gonna change this for the blending mode I'm gonna change it to screen and I will put the opacity to 50% and then I will leave the noise set to zero and then I'm gonna change the color to a bluish color alright maybe a little bit brighter than this all right something like this and that would be okay and then I will go to the size and I'm gonna crack it up a little bit to around 100 pixels all right now the next style that we are going to add is a gradient overlay so just select it and I'm gonna leave everything normal opacity 100 and then I'm gonna change the, the gradient in here all right so I'm gonna add another four stops or four color stops in here so I'm gonna one click right here and then another click and another one and another one and this will leave me with six color stops as you can see in here now we have six so we're gonna leave this first stop to white and I will go and select the next color stop and I will double click on it to change the color so I will choose a, a bluish color all right something like that and as you can see you can see in here the color this is helpful and I will press ok now we we'll go to the next color stop and I will double click on it and I'm gonna change it to black and I'll press OK and then I'm gonna go to the next color stop 
but I will leave it white and I will drag it to the middle as you can see in here you can see the location of every color stop by selecting each one in here you can see the location of it so for example this is in 52 so I'm gonna drag the black to next to it to around 50 percent or 49 and this will make it like this all right now I'm gonna go to the fifth color stop and I will double click on it to change the color so for this one I'm gonna choose a purple color all right something like this as you can see it looks nice with the, the color of this first text and I will press ok and I will move it just right here and for the last color stop I will double click on it and I will change it to black alright now let's go ahead and adjust the, the location of every color stop and see how this will affect our final gradient in here all right I think I'm happy with this or maybe I'm gonna change this blue to make it a little bit brighter all right and I will do the same for this purple let's make it a little bit brighter all right and I will piece OK now I will leave the style set to linear and the angle set to 90 but for the scaling I'm gonna put it a little bit higher as you can see the higher I go the, the other colors that they are in the edge they will disappear as you can see and of course we don't want that so I'm gonna keep looking and then adjusting the percentage somewhere in here as you can see I want it to be like this in the edge I think I don't like this purple in here to be on top so I'm gonna check this reverse option and this will make it reversed all right and I think I'm gonna reverse this black to be down in here so I'm gonna go back to the gradient and I will change this to here and this to here and I will do the same for the white so I'm gonna change it to black and this one I will change it to white so this is our final order all right and I hope it's okay all right now the next side that I'm going to add is uh, an inner grow so I'm gonna keep the blending mode set to screen and the opacity I will make it around 80% and the noise I will keep it 0% but for the color I'm gonna choose a light blue color or a soft blue color yeah something like this one in here and it will be okay and for the shock I will keep it 0% but for the size I'm gonna put it around 10 pixels and let's put down the opacity a little bit to 70 percent all right now the last side that we are going to add is a stroke so i'm gonna put the size to two pixels and the position i'm gonna keep it inside the blending mode is normal 100 percent opacity the fill type is set to color and the color we're gonna change it to white as you can see this will make it appear more all right and now we're done with our first size that we are going to use for this first text as you can see this is before and this is after all right now it's time to go to this outline layer and make it visible and the first thing that we are going to do is to put the fill to zero percent and then I'm gonna open the blending options so I'm gonna double click on it from here this time and this will open the layer side dialog all right now we're gonna add one side which is stroke so I'm gonna select it and then I'm gonna change the position of it to outside and I will put the size to 10 
pixels this time and as you can see this will make it a little bit weird but we're gonna fix that all right now i'm gonna keep the blending mode to normal opacity to 100 but in the fill type i'm gonna change it to gradient all right now i'm gonna enter the gradient in here and i'm gonna do the same with the color stops i'm gonna add one two three four and this will make them six all right for the first color stop i'm gonna change it to a blue color so something like this all right and i will press ok and the second color stop i will change it to a pinkish color all right and i will press ok and the third one i will change it to a soft blue color all right and the fourth one i will change it to purple so i'm gonna sample a color from here with this eyedropper in here and i'm gonna change it to a little bit lighter than this all right something like this it will be good all right so i'm gonna stick with this and i'll press ok and for the fifth color in here i'm gonna change it to a blue color and the last one i'm gonna choose a dark blue color in here all right as you can see now let's change the location of every color stop you can see i'm gonna try to make them even 0 20 40 60 80 percent and 100 and the is okay all right now we're gonna keep the style set to linear and let me move this a little bit and for the angle i'm gonna change it to around 115 or 114 in here and for the scanning i'm gonna put it to 150 and you know you can always go and move your gradient wherever you want so maybe let's find the perfect spot for this let's reverse it you know there's always this option to reverse and see as you can see now i like this reflection of the pink and the blue so i'm gonna keep it like this and that will be all for this layer so i'm gonna press ok and now we're almost done all right now we're gonna group these two layers together so i'm gonna press ctrl and click to the second layer in here and this will select them both and then i'm gonna press ctrl g or you can just drop them to this group folder icon in here and this will make them into a group so i'm gonna name this text 2 and then i will go down to the adjustments layer and i'm gonna choose solid color and then i'm gonna choose a dark blue color for this a little bit desaturated maybe something like this you can always copy the code if you want and use it all right so i'm gonna press ok now i want to make this color as a clipping mask to this uh, group in here so i can just press alt and then go between the the two in here from this group and the, the solid color so i'm gonna press alt and as you can see the cursor will change to this down arrow in here so by pressing alt and one click this will make it as a clipping mask and then i'm going to change the blender mode to exclusion and i will put down the opacity to 50 percent and as you can see this will desaturate the color to look very very nice all right now it's time to add our grid 80 background 
So I'm gonna select the background layer and then I will go to my folder and I will bring this AT theme grid wallpaper in here and I will scale it for it to fit with the canvas and I want this to be up and I will one click to this to confirm all right as you can see it doesn't look that good for now but we're gonna fix that so I'm gonna put down the opacity of this to 50 percent and then I will go to the adjustment layer and I'm gonna choose levels and then I'm gonna clip it to this one in here so I can either use the same method the alt method or I can go to this icon in here and one click on it and this will clip it to this now whatever change we're gonna do for this level it will affect only this image in here all right now I'm gonna darken it a little bit and I will put the highlights in here and in the mid tones I'm gonna make it a little bit darker something like this 0.90 all right I think it looks better already all right so we're almost done now the last thing that we are going to add is a, a texture so let's go ahead and select this first text layer in here and let's go to my folder and I will bring this texture and I will open it in here you will find everything that I used for this tutorial down in the link from the description so just download it and follow along all right let's make it bigger and a little bit like this and then I'm gonna change the blending mode of this to vivid light all right as you can see this will make it looks grungy and very old like this I'm gonna put down the opacity to around 80% of this texture all right you are done as you can see we create a very awesome stay home ET style uh, wallpaper in here now it's time to change the text to maybe other languages maybe if you speak another language let's say Spanish you can easily change this text and you know you can use it in your Instagram or wherever you want so let's go ahead and start with our first text in here so I'm gonna double click on it to highlight it and then I'm gonna type in Spanish so let's type quedarse and let's make it smaller by pressing ctrl T and I will drag it down and I will put it in the middle press enter and now it's time to change this in here so I'm gonna open the text to folder and I will double click on this smart object or you know you can right click in here and choose edit content and this will open in a new tab in here and as you can see the text is cropped so we don't have uh, no space to edit it maybe if we want to add more words so let's go ahead and fix that by using the crop tool and make space for our text like this and one click on this check mark all right now we can edit the text so I'm gonna type in casa I'm not gonna use any space and I will close this tab and I will make sure to press yes to save it and this will update the smart objects in here all right now let's go and move this down so make sure to select the group not just the one of the layers and put it down you can maybe make it a little bit smaller and then I'm gonna select them both the Kedarsi and Inkasa and put them down just right here and there we go we have our stay at home in Spanish in here all right so I hope that you like and enjoyed this tutorial 
and don't forget to subscribe and comment and you know stay safe be at your houses and let's hope for the best and have a nice day thank you for watching